Hey, it's Mr. Bison here, and this is the last video in this series of exam questions by topic. And in this particular one, I'm going to look at the product rule for counting. Now, the product rule for counting is kind of like where they want you to find out lots of different combinations of things. Like I always say in these videos, if you do want to use this document, it is linked in the description for you that will help you. OK, so this first one here, it says that Jeff is choosing a shrub and a rose garden and a rose tree for his garden. At the garden centre, there are 17 different types of shrubs and some rose trees. In other words, we actually don't know how many rose trees there are. Jeff says there are 215 different ways to choose one shrub and one rose tree. Could Jeff be correct? Well, in this one, the product rule for counting, it kind of does what you expect. It means you multiply these things together. So if there are 17 different types of shrubs and some rose trees, I'm going to let the number of rose trees be equal to n. What you would do is you would do 17 multiplied by n to get the number of combinations. And Jeff thinks that it would be equal to 215. So if I do that n is 215 divided by 17, let's actually find out what that is on the calculator and see if we um, see if we agree with him. So if we do 215 divided by 17, we get 12.64 blah 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 rose trees. And I don't think 12.64 rose trees makes any sense in this particular case that we've got here. So we're actually just going to need to say that this doesn't work. OK, so could Jeff be correct? We're going to say no. Um, n would need to be an integer. OK, let's see if we've got this one right. So the answer is no, and there is this idea of doing 12.6, saying it's not a whole number, so that one doesn't work. OK, this time it says Tracy is going to choose a main course and a dessert in a cafe. She can choose from eight main course and uh, main courses and seven desserts. Tracy says that to work out the number of different ways of choosing a main course and a dessert, you add eight and seven. Is Tracy correct? You must give a reason for your answer. Well, it's called the product rule, so you're not adding these things together. You should be multiplying. So we're going to say, no, you multiply eight by seven. You multiply eight by seven, not add. Then the part B says that 12 teams play in a competition. Each team plays each other, sorry, each team plays each other team exactly once. Work out the total number of games played. Well, there are 12 teams to begin with, and each team can play 11 other teams. And they're only going to play each other once. So actually, this is going to account for the number of, um, the number of matches twice. So we also need to divide it by two. Now, if you're not sure why that would do doubling, I've got a full playlist on this one that's on my homepage. So if you go to my homepage and you look for the product rule for counting, you will see me categorizing all of these questions into the different types that there are. So there are going to be, in this particular case, there are going to be 66 games because we don't want to double count each team playing. What I mean by double counting is we were counting previously A versus B. We were also counting B versus A, and they're only playing each other once, which is why we wanted to divide it by two. So we've got no with a reason. She should multiply eight by seven, and then we've got the 66 for this part. So we've got another one about a league um, going on here, and it says that there are 16 hockey teams in a league. Each team played two matches against each of the other teams. Work out the total number of matches played. So I'm not going to need to do the divide by two here because each team, A v B, is going to do two matches, which is the same as B v A, like you have home and away matches. So all I'm going to do for this one is just 16 for the first team. And then after you've picked that first team, there's only 15 other teams left. No dividing by 2 required for this one. That's what they're really testing that you've understood. And 16 multiplied by 15 is just 240 matches for this one. OK, so let's check it. Yeah, we've got the 240 right there. And we definitely didn't want that divide by 2. This one says, in a restaurant, there are 9 starters, 15 mains, and 8 desserts. Janet's going to choose one of the following combinations for her meal. So she's either going to have a starter and a main, or a main and a dessert or she's going to go all in and she's going to have a starter, a main, and a dessert. Show that there are 1,335 different ways to choose the meal. So first of all, let's do the starter and the main dish, which I'm going to do in blue. Well, a starter is 9, and a main is going to be 15 options. And then I'm going to add on the next part, which is going to be the main dish and the dessert. So for a main dish and a dessert, there's going to be 15 mains and 8 desserts. And then for our last one, which is going to be a starter main and a dessert, we're just going to have uh, 9 times 15 times 8. And we're just going to see what that comes up as when we put it on the calculator. And I'm expecting this to come up as 1,335. So 9 times 15 plus 15 times 8 
plus 9 times 15 times 8, and we do get 1,335. That's actually everything that needs to be done for this because all of the working out shows that going on here. So you'll see that the procedures, you get all three of them, you don't even have to have the numbers, but just the three calculations, and that all of them add up to this. There's no need to show the three products sum to it, but you can just actually just write them out like that. If you wanted to, you could evaluate each of these separately, and they've said that they evaluate to what's that, 135, 120, and 1080, if you wanted to. But we didn't need to have these particular values, but you can put them in if you like. Okay, we've got this one here, and it's about, um, it says there are three dials on a combination lock. So as soon as something to do with combinations, it makes us think of this topic. Each dial can be set to one of the numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five options, a bit like when we had the five starters and five mains and stuff. The three-digit number 553 is one way that the dials can be set, as shown in the diagram, 553. Work out the number of different three-digit numbers that can be set for the combination lock. Well, for the first digit, you have five choices, a bit like with the five starters. For the second digit, you have five choices. And for the third digit, you have five choices. So it's like the starter, main, and dessert, five choices for all of them. We just multiply them together, and we get that there are going to be 125 different three-digit numbers. Different three-digit numbers. Okay, let's have a look at part B. It says, how many of the possible three-digit numbers have three different digits? Okay, well, the first one, the first one can be any of the five numbers, but because we can't use that number again, for the second one, we can only choose from four, and because we've already used two, for the last one, we can only choose from three numbers. So the product rule for counting is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a five times four times three. This time, we only get 60 different combos, different possible digits or different, different possible numbers. So we've got 125 and 60. Let's see how it's gone. 125 and 60, and you can see the calculation that leads us there. Okay, Sadia is going to buy a new car. For the car, she can choose one body color, one roof color, and one wheel type. She can choose from 19 different body colors, so I know that this is 19, and she's got one roof color. We don't know how many roof colors, so I'm gonna call that N, and there are 25 different wheel types. The total number of ways Sadia can choose the body colour and the roof colour and the wheel type is 3,325. Work out the number of different roof colours that Sadia can choose from. So we know that if you do 19 and you times it by N and you times it by 25, that gives us 3,325. So I'm going to find out what N is by dividing by 25 and then dividing by 19. I'll do it slowly. So I'll first of all just divide by 25. So on my calculator, 3,325 divided by 25, that is 133. And now I'm going to divide, that was me dividing by 25, and I'm now going to divide by 19. And when I do 133 divided by 19, I get that the answer is 7. So there are 7 different roof colours to choose from, 7 different roof colours. Okay, let's see if we've got it right. There is the 7 that we've got there, and you can see that process of dividing by 19 and then dividing by 25. Jack is in a restaurant. There are 5 starters, 8 main courses, and some desserts on the menu. I'm going to call it N. Jack is going to choose 1 starter, 1 main, and 1 dessert. He says there are 240 ways that he can choose his starter, his main course, and his dessert. Could he be correct? So remember we're wanting N to be an integer if he is correct. So he thinks if we do 5 times 8 times the number of desserts, that we get 240. Well, I'm going to just do this on my calculator. I'm going to do, first of all, I'll divide by the 8, and then I'll divide by the 5. So if I divide, I don't have to divide by the 8, because I've done it in any order. If I divide by the 8, I would have 5 times n, and 240 divided by 8 is going to be 30. And then if I divide that by 5, so I'm going to do 30 divided by 5. Let's put this down a bit lower. 30 divided by 5 is obviously 6. 30 divided by 5 is 6. And you can check that it's right, because if I do the 5 times 8 times 6, I do get 240. So could Jack be correct? Well, yes, he would be correct if there were six desserts on the menu. He would be correct if there are six desserts on the menu. 
Obviously, if 6 was not a whole number, if it was like 6.1 or 6.5 or anything that was not an integer, then this would not be, uh, Jack could not be correct because you can't have a sort of decimal number of desserts. So yes, and they are looking for the number 6. They've used the letter X, you could use the letter N or Y, anything for this at all. In a school, there are 16 teachers and 220 students. Of these students, 120 are girls and 100 are boys. One teacher, one girl and one boy are going to be chosen to represent the school. Work out the number of different ways there are to choose one teacher, one girl and one boy. One teacher, one girl and one boy. So I think this 220 students is not really needed. So the teacher, there's going to be 16. The girls, we've got 120. And the boys, we've got 100. So we're literally going to just multiply those together. And that should give us the number of combinations. So we'll do 16 times 120 times 100. There is a staggering 192,000 different combinations that can be done. So the answer is 192,000 that we've got for this bit here. Now that is the every single question that has ever been asked up until the 2021 paper. Um, that's everything on product rule for counting, which is a very niche sort of topic, but it does seem to come up a lot. This has been a very, very big video series that I've been working on for a while. So I'd really appreciate it if you found this useful to just drop the video a like. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel. Maybe at this point you are not needing that much more sort of tutoring and help with stuff, but there are loads of other things on there, like I said, about everything for the product rule for counting as well. So um, good luck with your exams and wishing you the best luck with all your revisions.